Hello YouTube, I'm Jay and this is part 3 in my series of how to build a no water change tank and in the previous part I discussed what a, denitr a denitrification reaction does and in this part I'll be teaching you how you can create anoxic conditions to make sure that denitrification happens. Alright, so let's start off with looking at how a conventional filter works. So for a conventional filter, what you're looking for is nitrification. It's turning ammonia into nitrate. And then you get rid of the nitrates later by doing water changes. That's a conventional filter. So this is a basic layout for some sort of a filter. It can be any filter really. So a conventional filter has uh, pretty big pumps pumping large amounts of water into them. So you got a high flow here going in and high flow coming out of a relatively small sized filter that is say filled with any type of media that isn't really important for a discussion now say you have it filled with sponges and sand for example and what this means is because of that high volume of water coming in this filter will be fairly rich in oxygen and that is important because I, as I said what conventional filters aim to do is get rid of ammonia the immediate threat to your fish so they are geared to producing high amounts of oxygen to your filter. And that is because, as I discussed in Filtration Basics, the oxygen is the limiting factor here. Oftentimes ammonia will not be converted to nitrate fast enough because there is not enough oxygen. So they want to make sure this filter is full of oxygen. So they pump high volumes of water that is rich in oxygen coming from your fish tank into the filter. So basically, you start off with a very high amount of oxygen, and then as the water passes through the tank, oxygen is used up, uh, converting ammonia into nitrate, so oxygen is slowly declining, but at the end, there is still a decent amount of oxygen left, and that leaves your tank. So if you look at the oxygen levels in the tank, in the filter, when the uh, water comes in, it's initially very high, and as it passes through the filter, it's going to drop down a little bit, but there's still going to be some oxygen left at the end of the tank end of a filter. So conventional filters are mainly geared towards nitrification, removing ammonia, supplying high amounts of oxygen so that this reaction happens very reliably. That is how conventional filters work. But we don't want that. We're discussing how to get rid of the nitrates, not the ammonia. So what would you do if you want to get rid of the nitrates? So let's say you have a filter it looks something like this and you have uh, the same volume of media but except you have drastically reduced the flow into it so there's a very small amount of oxygen rich water pumping into this filter so what happens here so initially there's lots of oxygen and then because there's not so much oxygen coming in the oxygen is going to get rapidly depleted and by the end there is almost no oxygen left so what's going on here is initially the oxygen levels are high and then it drops down pretty quickly because there's not that much supply and by the end you have almost no oxygen so starting at this point this zone is aerobic and this zone is anoxic so you have produced an anoxic zone within your filter and it is as simple as that if you have a relatively large filter with a very small flow you will reliably get anoxic conditions because as I said oxygen is the limiting factor in most filters that is why um, wastewater treatment is all about pumping oxygen into the water because if you can just reduce the flow here that's a very easy way to restrict the oxygen into your filter it's not that complicated so that brings me to the first way you can get rid of um, nitrates through denitrification is you just make a, f a filter that has a very low flow so at at the intake where the water is pumping in there'll be high oxygen but as the water passes through the filter all that oxygen is going to get depleted and you will get anoxic conditions for denitrification to happen and it does not take something super complicated now I'm just going to show you this just so you don't go ahead and build something like this but there's something called a coil denitrifier 
and do not build this because this is a super complicated solution to a very simple problem. So what a coil denitrifier is, is that you take um, airline tubing and you coil it around many, 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 many times and then you have a small amount of water coming in and a small amount of water coming out. Because it's the airline tubing, it's very narrow, very small, so you can't get high flow into it. And at the beginning of the coil, um, the bacteria will colonize along inside the airline tubing. At the beginning, there will be good oxygen. And then somewhere in the middle, the oxygen will get depleted. And then the rest of the coil will be dedicated to denitrification. This is super complicated. You do not have to do this. All you have to do is focus on a relatively large filter with a very small flow. That is the two key things you have to control. As long as you're not pumping the filter full of oxygen-rich water, you can reliably create um, anoxic conditions. So all you have to do is say something like this. Say you have like a 20 liter, some sort of container filled with biomedia, and you have a three watt pump, very small pump going in. You're pumping water into it and water's coming out. This is all you need to do. You just have to make sure that you don't have like a spray bar here spraying oxygen rich water back into the tank or and you should make sure you have some sort of lid so air doesn't uh, flow in freely but really it's not that complicated all you have to do is make a very slow flowing filter with a relatively large volume so the oxygen gets used up in the first part and you have an anoxic zone in the next part that's all you have to do it's not that complicated and what you can do with a filter design like this is say you have a conventional filter and even in conventional filters if you have submerged media oxygen is a limiting factor and at the very end here you will get denitrification so you'll get a filter that is 90% nitrification getting rid of ammonia and you'll have a little bit of denitrification going on but it's so little that you will not really notice it and you will still have to do water change if you reduce the flow a bit you can get you can uh, tune it down and you can uh, fine tune it to get something like 50 50 so the first 50 percent will be doing nitrification and the next 50 percent will be doing denitrification so in the initial parts initial parts there'll be oxygen for the um, nitrifying bacteria and when the oxygen gets depleted the denitrifying uh, bacteria um, facultative anaerobes will be breathing the nitrates and getting rid of them and if you have a very low filter, you can have a dedicated denitrification filter. So the oxygen will be depleted fairly quickly in the initial parts of the filter, and then the rest of it will be dedicated to removing nitrates. So just by adjusting the flow that is going into your filter, you can create anoxic conditions very reliably. You do not need anything complicated. You do not need special media. You do not need to do anything fancy. You just have to build a conventional filter with a very um, a large volume and a slow flow. That's all you have to do, guys. And that brings me to the second way you can get rid of um, nitrates by denitrification. And that is, uh, this is the method that I use because it is the most simple thing you can do. It is very easy. Um, you just get a deep substrate. So you take something like fine gravel. This is what I use. You can also use something like sand. Anything that has a relatively small size will work. Anything, really. Whatever you can get your hands on. So you take something that's relatively small size like this and you create a substrate that is very thick. Um, you should get it about greater than 10 centimeters, which is um, about 4 inches. If you get it that deep, you can reliably create anoxic conditions. So what's going on here is... Um, of course, the water with your fish is rich in oxygen because otherwise your fish will die. So you'll be making sure you got good oxygenation in your tank. But as the water is slowly dissolving through into the substrate, at the top it's going to have rich in oxygen. But the oxygen is going to gradually be used up, and at the bottom you are going to have an anoxic zone. So here you will get denitrification going on. And this is what I do in my filter compartment for my turtle tank. I have a substrate that is almost 15 centimeters thick. That's full of gravel and some other stuff that I've accumulated over the years. So um, with this setup, you can actually see the denitrification happening because 
at the front you'll see tiny little gas bubbles fo uh, forming and this is the nitrogen gas um, so this is a very simple very easy way to create an anoxic zone for your tank and the third way which is um, I, I don't really see this getting discussed often it's a very obscure fact um, you can get there are certain types of media that can actually form um, an ano anoxic zone within them and one of this media is the stuff I use primarily for my biofiltration and I have not seen anyone in the United States or Europe use this I it's probably not widely available for purchase um, this is little baked clay granules basically these are called Huga stones and they are very popular for uh, filtration in Korea and um, other parts of Asia and this is actually a substrate that is used for orchids so orchid plants are planted inside uh, this very rough gravel looking thing it has tiny pores in it, it's like baked clay but you do not have to use something that is exactly the same as this anything that can like wick water and has a decent size to it and has fine pores um, you can get it to form anoxic zones and how this happens is um, water is slowly wicking through this media by um, the nature of the media itself it's like baked clay so as it's happening the surface is very rich in oxygen but as the water is passing through it's gonna slowly lose that oxygen to all the bacteria that is uh, colonizing the surface and by the time it reaches the core you'll get a small anoxic pocket so you can have 90% of media doing um, aerobic denitrif uh, aerobic nitrification the small anoxic zone in the middle is gonna get rid of the nitrates and that is what stuff that looks like this can do and although I haven't tested it anything that kinda has a similar look and feel to this will probably work I am moderately confident that although I haven't tested that hydrogen, hydrogen stones that are used for um, aquaponics will be able to do it as well but that uh, this will only sorta uh, help a little bit in terms of denitrification because most of the area here is um, high in oxygen and they'll be nitrifying and there's only gonna be a pretty small pocket that is anoxic so um, does this mean you can just switch the media to something like this and get a denitrifying filter? Um, the answer is no, it's not going to be enough. But it will help a little bit. So that's just a little something that you can do to uh, increase the um, denitrification potential of your filter just by switching the media. So that is something you can do. So let us just... Um, bring up another point that is important in creating anoxic zones for denitrification so basically in order to see the whole flow of this thing going on the denitrification is you start off with the protein that's in your food that's where the nitrogen starts you start off with that and then you use oxygen to turn that nitrogen in the form of protein your fish eat it and then they poop it out and it becomes ammonia and then eventually it becomes nitrate as you know so the protein in the food is converted through a variety of processes to nitrate and then how you get rid of nitrate is the bacteria who eat that eat carbon food just like us they eat the carbon and then they turn that carbon into co2 they breathe it out and in anoxic conditions instead of breathing oxygen they will switch to breathing nitrate and that will turn it into nitrogen gas and as i discussed in previous parts in this reaction oxygen is a limiting factor so pumping tons of oxygen is important to get this reaction going but what about this reaction the denitrification reaction this is gonna be abundant this is the stuff you wanna get rid of but what's the limiting factor here is the carbon food so if you're not feeding if there's no carbon food for the bacteria to eat there's no need for them to breathe in that nitrate so in order to really maximize the anoxic conditions getting rid of the nitrates you also have to give them the carbon food now I don't do this because um, I have other means um, to which introducing carbon food but if you're just building um, an anoxic zone type filter or a deep substrate or whatever and you really want to maximize the potential of that space um, you're gonna have to do something called uh, carbon dosing and you can add really anything um, people uh, add vodka 
which is ethanol, that's a carbon source, and you can also add sugar. That's another carbon source that the bacteria can eat. And um, you don't really have to add that much. Um, you can get away, um, say you have a 10 gallon tank, and you can add up to, say, one milliliter of vodka. Um, if you add more than this, there is a chance that it's going to be harmful for your fish, and um, usually you'll add a lot less than this. So 10 gallons, that's about 37 liters. So if you have like a tank that's this size and you can just scale it up or scale it down to your size, then people will add about a milliliter of vodka a day, usually less, usually less. If you add more, you, there's a chance that um, it's going to harm your fish. And you can do the same thing with sugar. And um, you have to kind of test the water for nitrates to fine tune the amount that you're adding so you can dose the minimum amount required. And this is something that I don't do, but um, if you're running a filter for nit uh, denitrification purposes and it's not getting rid of the nitrates quickly enough, you can add vodka or sugar to speed up that process a bit, process a bit and give the bacteria the food they need. So that is a little thing that you need to do to maximize the denitrification potential. So to recap, in order to create anoxic conditions that result in denitrification, the essential thing is to create something that is low flow so that um, you, you can prevent the high oxygen water from getting uh, into the water and um, not forcing the bacteria to breathe nitrate. You can do it very simply by creating a deep substrate. You don't need to do anything fancy, you just create a deep substrate and you're done. And uh, your choice of biomedia can also affect how much your filter is um, dedicated to anoxic zones. And if um, your anoxic zones are not converting the nitrates quickly enough, what you can do is you can dose carbon to feed the bacteria and help along that reaction and get over that limiting step that is the carbon food source. So this is how you can create uh, anoxic zones to get denitrification and get rid of nitrates. And in the next part, I am going to discuss how to use plants and algae, stuff like that, that is going to help get rid of everything else, essentially. So the problem with this is if you just build something that is a denitrification type filter, um, you're going to get rid of most of the problem that is the nitrates. But there is still, as I discussed in the first part, the problem that you're not balancing the input and output. This is just getting rid of the nitrates, the most important thing. But uh, in the following parts, I'll discuss using plants so you can get rid of pretty much everything else and truly create a no water change tank. If you do this, um, just by denitrification, you can get something that you have to do water change maybe only once in every six months or so. But in order to create a truly no water change tank, you're going to need the plants. So that's going to be the next part. Thanks for watching. I was Jay, and I'll see you in the next part.